Good morning. Welcome back. I hope everybody is doing well. I've got some great inexpensive Philips vinyl recommendations for you today. But first, please click on the like and subscribe, not forgetting the notification bell. Then you can watch as the videos drop and be the first in line at the used record store for all the great sounding cheap LPs. <laughs> Although audiophile does not appear on the thumbnail, this video is for audiophiles and lovers of great classical music, especially those who love great performances, the highest standards for solo, chamber, and orchestral work. Amazing singers too. These days, you'll hear a lot of aging hipsters talking on YouTube about rock music, saying it's the music stupid. Yet another shot at audiophiles, but with classical music, it's different. There may be a few pressings of Sgt. Pepper that sound different, but it's one record and one set of performances. But for us, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, for example, probably has 500 recorded performances. We need to know the best players, conducted, interpreted, recorded version before we plonk down the big bucks. It's the music stupid is self-evident. We're, we're listening to giants, not the local garage band on an indie label. As audiophiles and music lovers, we want and expect the best. That's why RCA Living Stereo, Mercury, Decker, and their Argo and Lurita subsidiaries, EMI and the like are beloved by audiophiles and music lovers. Best of the best. So why no Philips in the starry lineup? Philips is a Dutch record label founded in 1950. At that time, it was recording primarily classical records. I'm not sure whether the Dutch deferred to UK and US expertise, but they sidled up to Columbia, Mercury, and later formed Polygram with DG. Early stereo Philips recordings were pressed in the UK and the US before settling on their Made in Holland moniker in the early 70s. When Decca moved to Holland to press their records, it's a widely known fact that standards dropped. Even today, the Dutch pressing plants get no love compared to RTI, QRP, and Optimal. It was the same for Philips records. They look beautiful and have the ID sticker made in Holland or imported from Europe or made in the Netherlands proudly affixed to the bottom right of the jacket. But audiophile pressings such as RCA Living Stereo from Indianapolis or EMI records pressed at the Hayes plant, they are not. Let's talk artists. This is where, if you choose wisely, you can pick up massive performances. The assignment can sink of our orchestra, of course. The Beaux-Arts Trio, Quartetto Italiano for chamber music, and great solo artists like Claudio Rao, Alfred Brendel, and the wonderful violinist Arthur Grumio. Also, conductors Colin Davis and Bernard Heiting recorded many LPs for Philips. So, pricing. In near mint condition for both vinyl and jacket, I look to pay no more than 10 Canadian dollars, and that's on eBay and Discogs. Of course, there's the Discog seller's gouge and the Discog seller's shipping tax, and even eBay will try it on. So I look in the used bins, where even in the classical desert that's Canada, you can pick up some great Philips records for cheaps, $5, $4, even, even the dollar bin. So let's get to the fun part, and I'll give you some recommendations and talk about the recordings as I show them. And there's one or two recordings that I do not have that I'll put up that I think if you can get them at a good price, you should buy them. Let's begin with Alfred Brendel, one of the world's greatest piano players, so about the glare. Um, this is his Schubert series, um, recorded in the early to mid 70s. I couldn't find out where they were recorded. A wonderful artist. When I was at Trinity, uh, a lot of the piano players uh, kind of brushed him off and they preferred the Gillels or the Polini school of playing, which is fine because they're two genius as well. And they would call him Alfred Brendel, B-R-E-N-D-U-L, which is so far from the truth. He played with them tape on his fingers, so you get that kind of very gentle, soft sound, uh, very articulate, but uh, a very beautiful sound. And uh, these records really highlight his sound. Uh, I do prefer sometimes a piano on compact disc, especially to do with pitch and uh, and the timbre, but th these records get him really well. Now you can see the famous uh, imported from Europe sticker. Sometimes it's made in the Netherlands, sometimes it's made in Holland. Uh, but I got these for about a dollar each in some bin somewhere. Um, on, even on Discogs, they're very, 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 very inexpensive. And you know, Schubert uh, piano music, uh, it doesn't get the same 
press as Beethoven's piano music, but it is absolutely exquisite. And uh, there are some real masterpieces among this. So there's one, he's playing uh, sonatas in G and D and in C. That's their catalog number, the D894 and 840. I'll just go through these quickly. Uh, that's the Sonata in B minor, which is amazing, quite a late work. And the Wanderer Fantasy, many of you may know that. Fantastic piece. His very lovely Momon musical and very beautifully, deeply felt performance of the Sonata in A minor. Now the sound. Uh, again, we've talked about the sound not being part of the starry lineup as as uh, as, as RCA Living Stereo and Decker and EMI, etc. But um, it's very good. The pressings are, are very clean. You won't get many um, uh, poorly pressed as far as um, warps and things like that uh, from the pressing plants. But what you do get is it's not as um, they're not as deep in the sound stage. They're not as they don't sparkle like uh, some of the other great uh, record companies. Um, I'm not sure whether it's to do with the stampers or the plating or to do with the... I don't think the quality of the vinyl is that bad. It's such a very quiet vinyl. Um, but there's something going on compared to um, Decker and, and EMI. Well, let's put it this way. Same with DG. They have a house sound. Cool. Um, and the final one is the Schubert Impromptus. These are absolutely gorgeous. If you don't know those Impromptus, they're very beautiful. Um, and there's the man laughing. He's, I think he's saying, thank God, it's the last recording. I can go and have a vacation now. Anyway, fantastic performances. And nice sound. There's just not that much information about the recording locations, etc. These are all, again, mid-70s. This is Arthur Grumio, wonderful violinist, doing the Spring Sonata by Beethoven. Uh, it's just it's beautiful, with the great Claudio Arau as his accompanist. It's a very interesting artist, a pianist, Stephen Bishop, playing Mozart concertos, piano concertos, with the great Colin Davis and the great London Symphony Orchestra. I love the colours. Stephen Bishop, uh, I, th I think he's from Slovenia. He's still with us. He's in his late 80s. Wonderful, wonderful piano player. Great series of Beethoven sonatas. And he was Steve, when I was in London, he was Stephen Bishop. Then he became Stephen Bishop Kovacevic, using his, I think his Slovenian name. And then he became Stephen Kovacevic. I'm not sure what he is now. Either way, he's a fantastic pianist. And this is lovely Mozart. It's not the best Mozart, but it's very good. And again, for a dollar or two dollars or five dollars worth every penny. And the LSO play beautifully, of course. The Beaux-Arts Trio, they recorded God knows how many, uh, but the earlier ones, this is volume six of um, of Haydn trios, just shows you how many, and they did all the Mozarts and the Beethovens. And the best ones in the earlier years, the 70s, mid 70s, um, before they started coming digital. Um, and they're lovely sounds, just three, three musicians. So the miking was a little bit simpler and uh, it sounds very good. Anytime you, you know, the Boza Trio, basically the gold standard for trios. This is a wonderful record. I actually put this on the Audiophilia Dream List. Not only is it probably the best performance of this, these two masterworks, the Debussy String Quartet and the String Quartet by Ravel, played by the Quartetto Italiano, a very famous Phillips recording. Um, but the recording is very, very good. It's 1966. I'm not sure where it was recorded. They never give much information. But it's a very, very fine recording, very dynamic. The strings sound absolutely beautiful, very natural in a nice acoustic. Again, I don't know where it was recorded, but it's uh, definitely a first choice for, these, for this coupling. For me, I love it. And it's on our dream list. Probably this third top version of Mahler's great Des Lieder von der Erde, his song symphony. This is with uh, Concert Gebau with Bernard Heitink with Janet Baker, who is just transcendent on this record. And James King, who does a good job with a very impossible tenor part. Again, this was um, uh, pressed in, um, in in Holland. And it's from 1975. Uh, classic concert by orchestra. The woodwinds are absolutely exceptional. Uh, so is the, and the strings and the brass are no slouches either. Um, only the Klemperer and the um, Bruno Valter, I think, top this. But... Is it as good as the EMI recording for Clemper? No, it's not. 
It's not. I actually bought the clamp because I need, I wanted to do a little bit of a shootout. And uh, while the orchestra and the conducting and the interpretation and even the singing, Janet Baker, for sure, James King, even James King does a good job. Um, it comes pretty close. The recording doesn't, but it's still good. And this, I think, I saw it on Discogs for $7. It actually broke my heart. I thought, how can this magnificent record cost only $7? But uh, it's uh, definitely worth your 7 bucks if you can find it. I've spoken about this one before. It's actually mid-price, so you can actually get it for even less, I would think. Uh, this is the Schumann Novelletten, played by Claudio Rao. Uh, so good, it's on the dream list. This is, I think, an audiophile pressing. The sound of the piano is magnificent. Arouse playing is, as you know, second to none. And the pieces are lovely. They're very dynamic. When the record starts off, it starts off such a hell of a sound and a hell of a rate. I think you'll really enjoy it. It'll really surprise you. That's a Phillips. Very good. The, the piano sound is considerably stronger and better than um, Alfred Brendel. But that's a great record. And I've said probably the best recording to the last. This is recorded in Brent Town Hall in 1965, recorded in association with the British Council. Uh, there's the Hi-Fi Stereo, so it's early Phillips. Um, probably pressed in England. Of course, it gives no indication of made in you know where. <laughs> so we can't say for sure. But I will tell you, the repertoire on this record is absolutely superb. Michael Tippett's Concerto for Orchestra, one of the world's great pieces of the 20th century for orchestra. Magnificent piece played by the LSO with Colin Davis. It's just an amazing piece. And uh, the piece uh, by Alexander Gurr, now it's known as Sandy Gurr, still teaching at Cambridge, I think, um, teaching a composition, also with the LSO, but this time with Norman Del Mar, a very good conductor. And this is his little symphony, Opus 15. And that is definitely worth finding. Uh, this probably will not be as cheap. But I think you should definitely hunt down and uh, they're up there, they're getting up there like $15, $20 on, on eBay, but you might be able to beat them down to the price. Uh, the, the famous uh, high tank concert gabelle, Jure Antoine Nocturne by Debussy. One of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen on a record and a very beautifully played uh, record. And the recording is very good. Is the Jure recording as good as Ansemé on the speaker's corner or an original blueback? No, it's not. So there it is. Some wonderful Phillips records. I know it says $5 on the thumbnail, but you know, you can get some for less than $5, some for a few dollars more, but they're worth seeking out. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell. We really appreciate it. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.